Hey there, class. So uh, in this video, what I want to do is take a look at all of the inference procedures that we've learned about so far this year and uh, really talk about how to go through the thought process of choosing the correct procedure. So all in all, we've learned about 10 different inference procedures if you combine the confidence intervals and the significance tests. And those different inference procedures are used in different scenarios. Um, you know, think about if you've got a bunch of tools out in the garage. Uh, certain tools are good for some things, but not good for others. You, you know, you wouldn't use a hammer to try to cut a piece of wood. That wouldn't make any sense. And think about stuff in your kitchen. If you're trying to cook uh, something, you wouldn't want to use a crock pot probably to make popcorn. You know, that tool is not the right tool for the job. When it comes to inference procedures and statistics, the same sort of thing applies, where you wouldn't want to use a one prop Z interval if you're testing for a difference in a population mean. You know, those that tool is not good for that job. So we're going to go through the thought process here on how to choose the correct inference procedure for the job that you're, you know, trying to accomplish. All right, let's see if I can pull up this slideshow that I'm hoping to show you. I think that should work. All right, so we're going to look at choosing the correct inference procedure. One type of inference procedure we have are confidence intervals, and those are used to estimate a population parameter. For example, if we wanted to know or estimate what proportion of U.S. adults are vegan, we'd use a confidence interval. Or what is the true mean wait time at the DMV? we would be estimating a mean, we would use a confidence interval. We've learned about about five different confidence intervals, the one sample T interval, paired T interval, two sample T interval, one prop Z interval, two prop Z interval. So we've got a bunch of different confidence intervals for different scenarios. Significance tests, on the other hand, are used to get evidence against a hypothetical population parameter. And so, for example, if we wanted to test, are more than 10% of U.S. adults vegan? Is the mean wait time at the DMV more than 60 minutes? We would be testing against a hypothetical value, and a significance test is the best tool for that job. We've learned about five different significance tests in this class, the one-sample t-test, paired t-test, two-sample t-test, one-prop z-test, and two-prop z-test. So we've got a bunch of different tools for some different jobs. Now, there actually would have been three or four more of those if we had learned everything throughout the year, but we had to cut out a couple of things at the end of the year and that are not going to be on the AP test. So I've put together this flow chart to help um, really determine what type of test is appropriate for a scenario. So you'd start over here on the left. And your first question should really be about, am I dealing with a mean or proportion? Is the data I've collected quantitative or categorical? If it's quantitative and you're dealing with means, you'd move up this way. And if it's categorical with proportions, you would move down this way. Your next question would be, how many populations or independent groups am I dealing with? If I'm dealing with one, then I'm looking at the one sample or one prop intervals or tests. And if I'm dealing with two, then I'm looking at the two sample or two prop intervals and tests. The last question would be about, are we looking to estimate a parameter or are we looking for evidence against a value? Because that's going to tell you if you have an interval or a significance test. Just note here then what you're dealing with means. You must also determine if you're dealing with a matched pair study. So there's one extra question up here about, you know, are you dealing with a matched pair study? Because that'll tell you if you have a paired test or a one sample test. So here's an example. We'll go through the thought process in this flowchart. So example one, a school wants to estimate the average Wi-Fi speed and megabits per second that students are able to achieve with their Chromebooks. A random sample of 50 students is selected to run speed tests on their Chromebooks. So what's the most appropriate inference procedure for this scenario? Well, the first question is, is our parameter of interest quantitative or categorical? And in this case, we're looking at the average Wi-Fi speed, which is quantitative, measured in megabits per second. 
So that means we have quantitative or mean. So we're going to go, you know, up this direction in the flowchart. Next question is, does our study involve one population or two different populations? And we're looking at just one population of students. So our next question is, are we looking to estimate the average or test against a hypothetical average? Well, we don't have any hypothetical average to test against in the problem. And it says here that the school wants to estimate the average Wi-Fi speed. So we're going to go through estimate, which tells us we're going to be using a confidence interval of some kind. So the last question here, since we're dealing with a mean, is does our data come from a matched pair study? Did we pair up students and take two different measurements on those students? No, we didn't. They're just running the test once. And so this is going to lead us to a one sample t interval. We had quantitative uh, parameter. We had one population. And we're looking to estimate that parameter. So that leads us to a one sample t interval. Let's take a look at another example. So example two is a Samsung faster than an iPhone. A consumer group runs a study in which they randomly choose a group of Samsung owners and a group of iPhone users and time how long it takes to complete a specific task. The group wants to find evidence that the Samsung users will complete the, at the task faster on average compared to the iPhone users. All right, so first, first question, is our parameter of interest quantitative or categorical? Well, we're looking at the average difference in time that it takes to complete a task. That's a quantitative measure of time. So we're looking at means here. We're looking at a difference of two population means. Next question, does your study involve one population or two populations? Well, here we have two separate populations. We have a population of people who use Samsung and a population of people who use iPhones. So we have two different populations of interest. The last question is, are we looking to estimate the difference in time it takes for this task, or are we looking to test against a hypothetical value? And it says here that we want to find evidence that Samsung's will do this faster. So our hypothetical value is that there's no difference or zero difference, and we're testing or finding evidence of a difference. So that's gonna lead us to a two sample T test. You know, we had a quantitative measure of a time to take finish a task. We had two populations, Samsung users, iPhone users, and we were testing or finding evidence of a difference. So two sample T test. Let's look at another example. Does the proportion of AP stat students taking the AP exam differ from the proportion of AP calc students taking the exam? College board selects random samples of 100 AP stats and 100 AP Calc students and finds that 72 stats and 65 Calc students plan to take the exam. Is there evidence that the true proportion taking the stats and Calc exams are different? What inference procedure is most appropriate here? First question is, are we dealing with a mean or proportion? Well, there's some key words in here. The word proportion shows up a couple of times. And we're really looking at something that's categorical. It's about do they fit into the category that they are taking the test? And so we have proportions or categorical data. Second question, does your study involve one population or two populations? Well, there's a population of AP stat students. There's a population of AP calc students. So we're really comparing two distinct populations. And the last question is, are you looking to estimate a difference or are you looking to test against? And it says here, is there evidence that the proportion of stats and calc are different? We're looking for evidence, so we're looking to test. And that leads us to a two prop Z test. We have two proportions, we're testing for a difference between the two. Here's another example. How different are the proportions of Americans and Canadians who are religious? A random sample of 1,200 Americans age 18 to 55 contains 715 who are religious, and a random sample of 800 Canadians aged 18 to 55 contains 403 who are religious. We're looking to estimate the difference in the proportion of each population who are religious. 
So which inference procedure is most appropriate here? This would be a good time to pause the video and see if you can come up with that inference procedure on your own. All right, well, let's see what we got. First question, are we dealing with a mean or proportion? Well, the word proportion shows up a couple of times in the question. And it's also clear that we're looking at categories of are they religious or not? So we have proportions. Does our study involve one population or two? Well, we're comparing Americans and Canadians. That's two different populations. And last thing is, are we estimating how different those populations are? Or are we testing to see if they're different? And it says here we are estimating the difference in the proportion. So that leads us to a two prop Z interval to compare or find an estimate of the difference in proportions between Americans and Canadians. One last example. Is there a significant difference in the time it takes a person to brush their teeth in the morning or at night? A random sample of 30 people measures the amount of time they spend brushing their teeth in the morning and again at night. Each person calculates the difference in time, taking the night time minus the morning time in seconds. Is there evidence that there is a significant difference in the average amount of time taken from morning and night? So which inference procedure is most appropriate here? This one's kind of a tricky one, but it'd be a good idea to pause the video, see if you can come up with that inference procedure on your own. And let's see what we got. So first question is, is our data or parameter of interest quantitative or categorical? What are we measuring here? Well, we're measuring the time it takes people to brush their teeth. That is quantitative, so we're looking at means. Does the study involve one population or two? And here's why is a little bit tricky here, is because they're taking two measurements at night and in the morning. But that doesn't tell us we have two populations because we only have one population of people, only one sample. So we are looking at one population. Are we looking to estimate a mean or test against a hypothetical mean? Well, it says here, is there evidence? And that wording is really the key that shows us we are testing for a difference between morning and night. And the last question, do we have a matched pairs experiment? And this answer is yes, because each person acts as their own pair. We have two measurements, and we're really interested in the difference in those measurements for each person. And that leads us to a paired t-test. So hopefully from these examples, you are able to choose the correct inference procedure based on the scenario that you have. I know there's a lot of different procedures to choose from, but um, you know, go through that flow chart and try to really memorize really those three questions. Mean or proportion, how many populations am I testing or estimating? And if you can answer those questions, that should lead you to the correct procedure.